All right, polynomials are a really common topic in mathematics. Um, we use them to approximate things, and they're very easy to evaluate. Um, but you've got to learn some things about them. And the first thing that uh, I want you to deal with here is called uh, graphing with n behaviors. So um, n behavior is something that we talk about. It's kind of like what's happening at negative infinity or positive infinity or really far to the left or really far to the right. Um, so, And it's going to depend upon a couple of things. So the first thing is that it's going to depend on what type of polynomial you have. Do you have an even polynomial or an odd polynomial? Um, so let's say that we have y equals a, so that's the leading coefficient is a, and then x to the 2n, so that's the highest degree that we'll see. Well, uh, 2n is always going to be even because n is an integer. So we can use just that fact to determine what this polynomial is doing uh, really far out at the extreme ends. So if a is greater than 0, all polynomials that are even degree and have a leading coefficient that's positive will eventually do this kind of thing. Okay, So I don't really know what's going on in the middle there, which is why I just kind of like went back and forth a bunch. Um, but I definitely know that to the left and to the right, we have this behavior that I like to call high to high. So it starts high and it ends high. So every positive leading coefficient, even polynomial, will do that. And if the leading coefficient is negative, and it's an even polynomial, every single one of them will eventually kind of look like this, which I like to call low to low. So it starts low and it ends low. And we can also have uh, the same sort of patterns, but a little different, apply to uh, a odd-powered polynomial. So if the highest degree is odd, so 2n plus 1 will always be an odd number because n is going to be an integer. Um, so if a is greater than 0, what's going to happen is that it's going to start low, and it's going to end high. So starts low, ends high. And if we flip that and we have a is less than 0, well, the behavior flips. So instead of starting low and ending high, it's going to start up high and end low. So these are patterns that you need to remember. So even uh, is either going to be, uh, well, it's kind of nice. Even, uh, you know, kind of makes sense, right? Like symmetry, it's even, it's doing what it should do, maybe. I don't know. And then odd, like it's doing something a little strange. So it starts low, goes high, starts high, goes low. Uh, I just feel like the words kind of show what is happening, but you might not. Uh, might be that I'm weird. So let's look at something. Let's say we have, this is our polynomial. Well, we can just, looking at that, we can figure out what kind of polynomial that actually is. So it starts up high, and it ends down low. And I know that anything that starts high and ends low has to be odd, and it actually has to be a negative odd polynomial. So that's going to be the graph of a negative odd. Let's say we have something like this. Well, this is going to start low and end low. And I know that any polynomial that does that is actually going to be a negative even polynomial. And that's fine. Um, but what if the question gets a little weirder? What if I call the first one f of x and the second one g of x? And then the question becomes, what kind of polynomial do you get if you multiply f of x and g of x? Well, I can actually figure that out just by looking at the end behavior. So if I look at the left end behavior, so for f of x, the left end behavior is it goes high. Well, that means that it's going to have positive y values. And then for the g of x, the left end behavior is low, which means it's going to have negative values. If I multiply a positive and negative, I get a negative, and that means that the end behavior, uh, the left end behavior of this new polynomial is going to be low. And I can do the same thing for the right behavior. So for the right behavior, I'm going to end up with, uh, for f of x, it's negative, and for g of x, it's also negative. So negative, negative. And if I multiply two negatives, I get a positive, and therefore that's going to be high. So if I want to just sketch some garbage, ver garbage version of this, it's going to look like this. Um, and that is going to look like a positive odd function. Um, so let's look at one more of these. So let's say that I have f of x here, and it's low to high, which means it's a positive odd. And let's say I have g of x, which goes from high to low, so that means it's a negative odd. And I want to look at f of x times g of x. So I'll look at the end behavior again. So the left end behavior, it's low times high, which is negative times positive, which is negative, which means that's going to be low. And 
I don't know why I put negative 1. That's just negative, not necessarily negative 1. Um, the right end behavior is going to be um, high, which is positive, and low, which is negative. So high, positive, to low, negative. Um, and when I multiply those, I'm going to end up with a negative, which is also low. So a garbage version of this graph would look like this. It goes low to low, which I know is a negative even. Okay, so that's one way that you can use this end behavior stuff. It's really helpful when you're graphing, um, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.